Um, but yeah, so time for me to talk about video production uh, or how to start your career as a successful YouTuber with TPD for 114. And maybe that's a tease for something that comes at the end of the end of the lecture. You might just have to stick around to, to find out. So uh, first of all, why am I doing this? Uh, I have absolutely no professional training. Uh, I am uh, I'm doing computer science, so I'm not even in the right field for this. Um, but as you can see from this wonderful art, wonderful art piece that I made specifically for this presentation, uh, I have been doing this for quite a while. I have uh, actually it's more than ten years now. Even it's this is from my, the first YouTube video that I posted, uh, which was edited, recorded, and edited on a flip phone. Um, but uh, yeah, this is very close to twelve years ago. So I have been doing this for a little bit. Let's see. So uh, basically what I'm going to go through today is uh, first, I'm just going to show the video that I made last year, because uh, I'm going to be using my process and my experience uh, as examples in a lot of these steps. Uh, and I'm basically just going to go through like all the steps that uh, I feel like you need, or at least that I needed uh, when I made my video. So first, like how you, how you find your concept, um, you know, how you write your script if you want one, how you do recording, how you edit, uh, just finishing up and some like general tips to keep in mind at the end. Uh, after that, we can do questions and uh, this will probably be after the break, um, but uh, we can look through some more video examples from last year. All right, so this should have audio. Let me know if it doesn't when it starts. In Civilization, a 1991 strategy game, you lead a nation from the Stone Age to the modern era. You compete with other historical world leaders who will try to stick to their real-life behaviors. Gandhi, for example, just wants to stay peaceful. You see, leaders have a score which decides how aggressive they should be, and Gandhi, naturally, has the lowest aggression of any leader, 1 out of 10. When it's time to choose a system of government in the game, around the same time that nuclear weapons become unlocked, Gandhi will of course choose democracy. This further lowers his aggression by 2. And at this point, we have to talk about how computers store whole numbers, or integers. When wanting to store a number, a computer needs to put aside a certain amount of space in its memory and decide whether or not the number can be negative. Let's use 8 bits of space for now and only handle positive numbers, which looks like this. Okay, but what happens if this space is full and you try to add one to it? This number is in binary, but we can switch the ones for 9s to make it a bit more intuitive. Adding 1 will increment the number like usual, but this new digit would end up outside the allocated space. And since that area might contain something important, we can't just put a new digit there. So this 1 just disappears. And as you can see, our number is back down to 0. This is called integer overflow, and it happens if we try to increase a number above what we have space for. If we try to subtract from 0, the opposite will happen, integer underflow, and we will wrap back around to the highest number possible. Remember the aggression score that I mentioned? That's also stored as an 8-bit integer and can only handle positive numbers. So when Gandhi's aggression score gets lowered by 2, it goes all the way around to the maximum possible value. This all means that around the time that nukes are unlocked in a game of Civ, peace-loving Gandhi suddenly gets an aggression score of 255 out of 10. This story has been well known for at least a decade, and nuclear Gandhi is a famous bug in the game's community. The curious thing is that Sid Meier, the creator of the Civilization franchise, released a book in September this year where he says that the bug never even existed and doesn't know where the story came from. At least it's an interesting way to learn some computer science. All right, so uh, just since uh, we talked about it uh, earlier, uh, as you can see with my sources, I both had them all at the end because I wasn't sure if we if we needed to do that or not. Uh, but then I also like showed them underway during the video, and that's another way to do it if you don't just want to put everything at the end. Uh, and then I have the image sources at the end because yeah, it feels kind of overkill to uh, to. Uh, Kind of overkill to show those uh, underway um but yeah anyway uh so basically uh when i it was time for me to find my concept and try to figure out what i wanted to make my video about uh i didn't find anything for a long time i i had some idea i don't even remember what it was but i had an idea that i wasn't very happy with uh that i was trying to 
think about uh what i wanted to do uh wanted to do with but uh suddenly like as i was going to sleep one night um i suddenly had an idea that oh this could be this could be cool this could be something too like this could be a, a nice and interesting angle uh and so i got out of bed and i started writing on like a whiteboard that i have in my in my room uh just like writing down the basic idea and like a kind of a storyboard for it uh so that i wouldn't forget it by the time that i woke up uh and so i even i recreated this for for this presentation i didn't i didn't take a picture of it originally but uh, this is what it looked like and just i have a black like i have a black pen but it was dark so i didn't i didn't see that i was using the red one i thought i was using the black one um but anyway so what i did here is that i had like uh, on the left side i basically put like what i wanted to talk about and what i wanted to say at the different points uh and on the right side i put what i wanted to show like visually on the screen uh, and this is basically what my storyboard for my concept uh, ended up being like so uh as Sada said, if you have a specialization or a master project, that's what you should make your video about. Uh, I didn't because I did this in, in fourth grade. Um, so, yeah, if if you don't have it, then just you can do uh, you can talk about another project that you've had that you have or that you've had, or just something else from your uh, from your field. I uh, I feel like I kind of got away with one with my video because it's effectively it's a it's a it's a video about a video game, but uh, I got just enough uh, curriculum in, in there to uh, to have it be okay with Sada. Um, but yeah, regardless of what you choose, one minute is nothing. Uh, we had two minutes last year because we were a third of the amount of students that you are. Um, but yeah, we had two minutes and I thought that was problematic. Uh, so I completely understand the struggle this year. Uh, but Let's see what that what that means is that uh you should effectively just make it a teaser like we're not gonna expect anyone to completely explain a course or like a, uh, completely explain a project or a, a problem or anything like that um one minute it is not enough for that uh, five minutes is probably not enough for that but especially not one minute uh, so you can make it kind of a, like a trailer or a teaser for your course uh, you can cover one specific part of your question or field uh just like one specific thing uh, kind of like i do here like this integer overflow this is just you know one bug that can happen in computer science uh, but it's still more than enough to uh to fill an entire video like this um but whatever you choose uh try to make it stand out in a good way um because this is not just something i'm saying now because i'm part of the course staff now, but uh, uh, even last year, I thought about this, that like, yeah, okay, they're going to look through, you know, 130 or 120 or whatever, how many were uh, people we were, they're going to look through 120 or 130 videos. 160. You know, 160. Okay, it was even more than I thought. Yeah. Uh, they're going to look through 160 videos. Like, if I want to get, you know, if I want to, if I want to impress anyone, then I should probably make one that's like, I don't know, positive during that. Like, I, I was imagining that, you know, they sit through, uh, you know, 160 PowerPoint presentations and find one with like a little bit of humor and, and interest. And I think if everyone does that, then uh, most people should get really good videos. <laughs> uh, so try to find an interesting angle. Uh, another way to look at it is that like, if you're at a party and you're talking to someone who knows nothing about your field, like, and you have just like a quick conversation to talk to them uh, about something like to to show them something cool they are working on like what would you talk about um like find like a, a story like a storyline or something or an interesting question or something like that i talked about and try to make that like your the thing that you're showing in this one minute um yeah if you <laughs> If you can be bothered to, storyboarding is great, especially if you're doing something that's kind of heavy on visuals. Uh, my video isn't super heavy on visuals. It uses like a few like animations uh, just to explain the technical things, which is kind of important uh, for the for the thing that I'm showing. But um, and even I in my like video, that's pretty simple. Like visually, I you know I had an entire column where I talked about 
or where I planned out what I wanted to do. Uh, but especially for people who do like more videos that are more heavy on uh, animation and stuff like that, you should probably storyboard and probably make it like a comic strip because that really helps plan out how your um, how your video is going to be. So um, first of all, you don't technically have to write a script, uh, but I think if I was making a video, like two minutes was already a low enough time that I had to make a script to make anything coherent uh, because it's hard to condense what you're going to say into such a small amount of time. So I know that if it were me, I would definitely be making a script for, for the one minute video. Um, because yeah, that really helps you just stay on target and you know stay focused on, on what's important. Uh, this is my script from last year. I, I have it on the side here as well. And this is not a lot of text, but you can half this and you can probably say that in roughly one minute. Uh, I also used comments on the sides, uh, both for like alternative ideas or for my sources. I removed the sources once as I was putting them into the video, but uh, and you can also use these for like, if you want to do something visually, when you say this, you can put that in the, in the comments. That's something that really helped me like plan out my video and get a good overview. Um, yeah, so the process that I use for this, uh, and that I would recommend other people use for this is just try to write something interesting that like roughly fits within the time and try to write like. Yeah, try to just write an interesting script. <clears throat> it's probably going to suck. Uh, and it's probably going to be too long. Uh, this is just, I, I went back and looked at the edit history of my documents. And this is just one paragraph, uh, which I had to cut roughly half of. And I changed a bunch of other things. Uh, so the way that you fix both, the, both of those problems is that you read it out loud many times. The main reason I think that it's going to suck in the start is because, at least for me, when I write things, I don't write them how I would say them. So when I actually say them out loud, they sound weird or they're they're difficult to say, for example. Uh, like maybe there are many repetitive sounds after each other. Uh, so this is just uh, this is just the edit history, like after I was finished with my script. Uh, so there are quite a few changes that I made. Uh, just as I was as I was reading through it over and over, trying to to find something that I was happy with, and yeah, this I, I don't think this is a lot of edits either. I thought I had more than this because I felt like I changed the entire thing multiple times. Uh, but yeah, no, the the key here is just reading it out loud multiple times and changing it each time as you go through. Because yeah, that uh, also time yourself obviously when you when you read it so you know how long it takes because that's. Uh, crucial to manage to get it under the, the the limit. I spent like my original script was over three minutes long, but I managed to get it down to under two. So um, then you got to record. Uh, this is a good time to talk about like what your options for visuals are, because uh, uh, <laughs> I know that Slido keeps saying slides a lot, but you don't have to make a PowerPoint uh, and record it. That's just it's just one way to to do it for that fits with a lot of like infographic videos, but um, there are plenty of ways to do this. And th these are all examples from last year uh, from like good videos, really good videos. Uh, so you can do like full animation like this one did. This is just like all animation, uh, the entire video. This is a really nice one, by the way. I really like this. Um, you can do like hand-drawn animation like this one where uh, it's kind of like those draw my life videos. I'm not sure how this one specifically was made, but it's probably not very hard to find out. And this is a nice way to do it. Uh, you can do a combination of animation and real life photo. Uh, I the real life like footage in this uh, in this one is really impressive. That's why I wanted to show that one. Uh, but that one uses a combination of the two. Uh, or you have like completely real life videos. This one reminds me of like an NRK program or something. It's it's really nicely made. <laughs> But uh, basically, the point is that there are many options that are not just a bunch of slides after each other. Um, obviously, you can do just a bunch of slides after each other. That's fine. Uh, but I would try to make sure that it doesn't get too boring then, because no one wants to to watch, you know, just PowerPoints for for a bunch of hours. Uh, 
Tara? Can I can I just uh, include that like the last video? I think he was recruiting people for his survey in this video. Yeah, so you was. can it was it was really a smart way to use it for your project <coughs> as well. So think about if you can do this kind of teaser for um, for your project. Yeah, no, he at the end he says that like yeah. Yeah, and our, our the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to you know user test our uh, our video game and uh, is that something you might be interested in you know contact us at this and this, which was it's, it's a really it's a really good video and uh, I mean all of these are good videos so I you know I didn't choose bad examples <laughs> and these are also on the course page uh, so you can see the full videos there and we might look at some of these later. Uh, but yeah, as as you know, I went for a combination of real life video and like with some small animations. I'll talk about how I did my animations later. Um, but basically this meant that I had to do some filming, uh, which is not necessarily as easy as you think. This was my setup. <laughs> I uh, basically, I sat on my bed because I wanted the, the computer monitors in the background. So I sat on my bed, uh, I put a box in front of me where I had a separate microphone. I'll talk a bit about my microphones, microphones and stuff soon, connected to my laptop. Uh, my laptop was placed like this when it was actually time to film on a, it's a small Ikea table uh, with a laptop on top of it. Uh, so I had the script on my laptop because uh, I couldn't memorize it. I, it's great if you can, but it took too, too much time to memorize it. Uh, so I had the script on there and I'll talk a bit, uh, a bit more about that soon. Uh, and then I, and then I used double-sided tape to, to tape my phone to the, uh, to the wall. I basically like put my case on backwards so that the rear facing camera was like pointing out in front instead. And I put tape on the back of the, the case and I just taped it to the wall. Uh, and I put the phone like directly, directly over the, the computer to have it as close to the script as possible. So yeah, this is how it ended up looking in the end with my, to get the correct height for the, for the laptop. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, no, I even found a real life use for discrete mathematics. So that was, that was nice. Um, but yeah, and then I did a bunch of takes. I tried to look back through my, uh, my videos on my phone, but I think I deleted a bunch of them because uh, I kept like, eight different takes or something. And I know for a fact that I did way more. <laughs> uh, so some of them were like test takes to see what looked good, what position I should be in, uh, making sure that I found an audio solution that worked. Um, and obviously there were a bunch of takes where I messed up what I was going to say. So I stumbled in my words, uh, something like that. And I didn't want to make any jump cuts. So I had to get a full two minute, uh, two minute video. And I finally did, um, which was great. And that time that nuclear weapons that looked like this, uh, the laptop screen was. This is the first uh, the first full uh, shot that I had where I didn't mess up my words or anything like that. So I was really happy until I looked at the video. Uh, this is my laptop screen in front of me. <laughs> so uh, I put it too high up, uh, and then I managed to do another one. See, oh, there. I managed to do another one and it looked like this. It was out of focus the entire time. Uh, so somehow I managed to turn off autofocus and focus something else. Uh, yeah, and then I finally did one more. <laughs> uh, and uh, that one was in port ray mode, so it wasn't the wrong orientation, but uh, that's something I can fix in post. So I ended up keeping that one. Let's see. Uh, so after that, I didn't do many changes to it other than flipping it 90 degrees uh, in my editing software, which I think every program should be able to do. Uh, but I also changed the white balance just a little bit. I, I am not uh, good with colors or anything like that. I'm not a photographer, uh, but uh, just changing the white balance can have a really nice effect on your video, uh, especially for mine. I recorded mine in this room, which is pretty yellow, uh, especially when you're doing this in an afternoon uh, in November, because then it's going to be dark outside and you're not going to have any natural light. Uh, so I wanted to color correct it just a little bit. So I changed the white balance, which I think also most programs, maybe not the simplest ones, but most programs should be able to do that, uh, where you just tell the program what in the video is supposed to be white and it like removes some of the orange, for example, in my case. 
And so I, I, it made a pretty big difference for me. So yeah, uh, if you're going to do real life recording, obviously you don't you don't have to do that. But if your video, uh, if you want to make a video that has real life recording, uh, first of all, the really nice thing now is that almost every phone has a really good camera, uh, or every phone has a camera that's good enough, basically. Obviously, if you have a proper camera, that's better. Uh, but by far the most important thing is that things are well lit. Uh, my video looks kind of smudgy. It's not super high definition, but Again, that's because it's in a sort of dark room with not very good lighting. Uh, if I had taken that video right next to a window, uh, like in the middle of day with light coming in through the window, not directly hitting my face, but like with plenty of light, then it would have looked much better. Like I have much higher quality videos from the same phone uh, because they're taken in much more well-lit areas. Uh, so try to get like good lighting. Like phone cameras are great, unless it's dark, basically, unless it, uh, the scene is too dark. So if your phone camera or like if your phone video looks bad, uh, try to get better lighting before you, you know, try to rent the camera or whatever. <laughs> uh, and then if you, like me, couldn't memorize your script, uh, obviously memorizing your script is better because you can look at the camera and you can be more emotive and I love that good stuff. But, uh, but uh, I didn't manage to do that in time. Uh, so. I did a really janky solution. I'm going to show you this. Wait, let me let me change my screen share to just my entire screen. Um, but first of all, the script should be under the camera. Uh, I don't know if that's the actual objective answer to this, but uh, I did a. I just tested like looking at or like reading things from to the left, to the right, on the top and at the bottom of the camera, and if you have stuff right under your camera, that looks much more natural than if you have it right above or to the right or to the left. Because uh, it looks like I look, I'm look i looking into the camera in my video, but I'm actually reading text so that's on the screen instead. Uh, this is probably obvious, but it should the script should be as close as possible to the camera. Uh, and it shouldn't be too wide, because if it's very wide, then you can see that your eyes wander from the left to the right, and it's obvious that you're reading. But if you keep it very, like, very narrow, uh, it, you can see that your eyes are going back and forth. So again, it doesn't look like you're reading something. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So uh, this is a terrible solution, but this is what I did. Uh, you should be able to see the, the word window now, right? Yeah. I basically copy pasted my manuscript, put it into Word. Uh, I changed the line spacing to the maximum. I might've even actually put it, I think I even put it above this up to like five or six or something. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I pressed, like, I kept this window as close to the top as possible. I think I even did, yeah, I did this to make uh, the bar at the top as small as possible. Then I pressed the middle mouse button, and I moved the mouse down a little, because now I'm not using my hands, but it's scrolling down automatically. And I basically, I changed the line spacing to uh, make it so that this was, like, a good pace for me to read. Uh, and so this took a little bit of fiddling, but I managed to do it in the end. But uh, later, I realized that there is actually a better way to do this um, because people obviously make websites for this. Uh, so I think I put this one in the in the resource document for the course with like useful resources, but uh, I could put it in the in the chat anyway. So basically, this one just lets you change a bunch of settings, and it lets you use your spacebar and arrow keys to like choose faster or slower speeds, and it's a really good website. So I recommend using this one instead, or just something similar. I'm going to put it in the chat as well. It's called QPrompter, and I think the website is from, yeah, I don't think the design has changed since 2005, but it works really well. So you can also find that in the, in the, in the slides, which I'll publish on Blackboard later. Um, yeah, speaking of which, I've tried to make the slides useful. Uh, you can go back and look at like the points. Uh, usually I wouldn't use this many like bullet points, but I wanted to make them useful for people who go back and look at the slides later. So um, if you do audio recording, uh, obviously you could get away by not, you know, you don't have to do that. But uh, the nice thing is that like every platform in the universe now has a good audio recorder. 
um, like Android and iOS have their own audio recorders, um, like just Windows, you can do just search for voice recorder and you find one and uh, the QuickTime player apparently uh, and iOS has one as well or in Mac OS has one as well. Let's see. Um, and yeah, uh, you can use your phone mic if you want to. Um, it's probably going to be kind of noisy in the background, so you might want to do some noise removal, which there is a good guide on in the in the program to use websites document, the one you can find in Blackboard. Um, but like the just the pure qual, like the quality itself of the phone mic is okay. It's just it gets kind of noisy in the background. Um, but otherwise, if you have a you know a decent headset or a standalone microphone for whatever reason that I don't actually use the microphone that I used for this video for anything. It's just something I had lying around. So it's not a very good microphone, but it's good enough that it's it was worth using. Um, I also, if you're on Linux, I mean, you, you probably love Googling things so you can find, like you can find your own, own program for this. I don't, didn't bother getting into that. Um, screen recording has also gotten really simple uh, these days. On Windows, you have multiple options. You can do Windows G, which brings up this panel where you can use this button to record right here. Uh, if you want, oh, if you want some more options and settings, you can use OBS, which uh, it stands for Open Broadcasting Software. And I see that, that it's almost eleven o'clock, so we can take a little break when when we get there. But uh, this is OBS. This is what it looks like when you open it the first time. Um, and you simply just add, if you want to record your display, you put a display capture here. And uh, yeah, uh, this has all the settings you could possibly want in, with regards to the video and even encoding and stuff like that. So if you want something a bit more fancy than the standard ones, this I think this works on every platform as well. And it's free. Uh, on Mac, you have both the QuickTime player and Although this didn't work for Sara when I told her this, uh, Google tells me it should work for some people. Uh, you can do Command Shift Five to bring up the screenshot bar, which should have a recording button. But if that doesn't work, the QuickTime Player has a has a an option for it. And if you need more more help with that, just Google it. And yeah, I don't have a Mac, so I can't show you. Uh, and on both major uh, mobile operating systems, you can also just record straight from the system tray. Uh, I think the Android one came with a recent Android update. Uh, so if you're on like, I don't know, a Nokia or a Motorola or something, I'm not sure how quickly they uh, update their Android, but uh, it's it should be pretty easy. Because um, yeah, they're, they're mostly just buttons and you could always use an app if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I suggest that we take a little break now uh, before I continue with this. Uh, yeah, so we can start a uh, quarter past 11 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, we were talking about a recording of like different types of content for, for your video. Uh, Yes, so I suck at animation, so I'm not going to cover that properly. Uh, there are plenty of ways to animate things in a proper way, which you know we've had lectures about already. Uh, and uh, I think you're much better off just also Googling than having me talk about it. Uh, but what I can say something about is how you can animate in certain video editors. Because um, the graphics that I did in mine, that was all in my video editor. Uh, like there was no other program involved there. And the way that I did that was by basically just making some images in, um, in Photoshop. So I made these just like the different parts of the graphics that I wanted to have, uh, which I made in Photoshop. And then let's see if I can find my video here. Uh, I straight up put it into my editing program. Uh, so, like, I can remove, let's see, some of these. Uh, but so, like, 
here, for example, you can see the, the red thing that I use to, uh, to mark like a certain digit. That's this, this file right here, which is just the image, like having been inserted into the, uh, into the video. Uh, but this is probably not the easiest way to do this. Uh, that's just the way that I know how to, how to do this. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show that it's possible to do this and video editing as well. If you don't want to, if you don't want to do it somewhere else, but you probably need, uh, a more feature filled editing program, which I'm going to get back to, uh, different editing programs, but, uh, this probably doesn't work very well in like the simplest, simplest, uh, editing programs that you can find. Uh, but yeah, so not the best way to do it probably, but it's the way that I did it. So let's talk about editing. Um, editing is basically where you put everything that you've made together into one video. Uh, so you take your audio and you take your different video and figures and animations and whatever, and you put it into a video. Um, and this can take <laughs> anywhere from a moderate to a very, very long amount of time. But the thing that is guaranteed is that it's going to take more time than you think. Uh, it, it even does for me. Again, I've been doing this as a hobby for almost 12 years, and it still takes more time than I, than I think it's going to take. Uh, so I would be surprised if it didn't do that for you as well. Um, and yeah, like the time that it takes completely depends on how much of your video uh, you need to like stitch together in the editing process. Like if you've made everything ready and then you just have to like put together a few clips and the correct sequence with some audio, then that doesn't take very long. But you probably have to add text for your sources and a bunch of different things. So, although you could also do that in PowerPoint. But anyway. Um, you have a bunch of different programs to choose from. I'm going to recommend some in just a second, uh, but there are a million different editing softwares. Um, and most of the, like the best thing is probably just to use whatever you have experience with, but uh, yeah, you might not have experience with anything and that's, that's also fine. Uh, yeah, and there are some important features uh like being able to trim clips like split them into sequence them correctly uh putting like putting in audio that's separate from the video so you can like slide it around to to time it correctly uh adding text and stuff but everything i'm going to show you has like has all those features and i think any decent video editor has all of those features even the super basic ones uh so basically you have like two main categories to go for you have the ones that are just like minimum feature, but very simple to use. Uh, iMovie is included with Mac, right? Sarah? Yeah. Um, and you also have video editor and Windows, which, yeah, I tried it out just with some random GIFs and videos that I had, and it's it's very simple to use, uh, but it doesn't have a lot of features. But look, you just, you know, you just drag things down here and you can, uh, you can add like music or custom audio. Uh, and yeah, you have something for text as well if you wanna if you wanna type something, right? Uh, so this one works just fine if you don't want any fancy features. Uh, and iMovie is also very simple to use and has like some basic features. I I looked through a tutorial that went through everything in iMovie and it was like twenty minutes long, so it's very simple to use. Um, and it's good enough if you just wanna like clip or like. Uh, yeah, just, you just want to trim your clips, put them in the right order, or maybe add some text and some music or some audio, or maybe even if you want to change like the visuals a little bit, like color-wise. Uh, I know that iMovie has some features for that, and maybe the Windows one does too. Uh, but then you also have more like premium options or options that have uh, a fuller feature set. So uh, first of all, you have the Adobe Suite with Adobe Premiere and to a lesser effect, uh, After Effects, if you want, if you want to be really fancy, um, but uh, obviously you, uh, if you want to use those legally, you need a subscription. Um, some people have that through the school, but not most people. I think it's just people in the design department. Um, but yeah, so most people don't have it through school. You could, of course, get the subscription for one month if you wanted to, but um, I don't know. I I probably wouldn't bother learning Premiere for the specific project, uh, especially not if I have to pay for it. Um, the other option that uh, one of the students uh, showed this to me, uh, it's called the uh, DaVinci Resolve. And I, I looked it up and it actually looks like a very solid uh, 
very solid software because the consumer version is free. They also have like a professional studio version, which is what they use to make their money. Uh, but the consumer version is completely free and has all the features you're ever going to need. Uh, and while it's certainly going to take longer to learn than iMovie or video editor, um, it's still understandable enough that it should be possible to learn for this project. Uh, if you just look up some, some YouTube guides. Uh, personally, I use a program called Vegas Pro, uh, but I wouldn't recommend using that because you have to pay for it. Uh, and it's not very good. So uh, just use something else. Uh, but that means that I can't uh, specifically tell you how to use these other softwares. It's much better to just try to look up a guide by yourself uh, to learn the basics. Uh, but uh, I know that DaVinci Resolve, they're like they're known for their color work. Like it's a very good um, platform with regards to uh, making sure your colors are good and stuff. Uh, so you can go way more in depth than you would ever need to for this project if you want to. And they have a bunch of other features as well. So I would recommend that one if you want to, if you want something a little bit more fancy than the basic ones uh, and you don't want to spend money. So, uh, yeah, basically for this, I have made just like a small checklist for things that you should make sure uh, to check after you're done with your video. Uh, for, first of all, like in your editor, make sure that your video is one minute or less, like we talked about. Uh, this is easiest to do before you render out your video uh, because, yeah, uh, you obviously also need to choose a sensible format. Don't use like GIF for your video. <laughs> um, MP4 is the best example. Just use MP4 if you can because, uh, yeah, it's, it's decent. It's fine. Uh, there's also some, uh, some resources for like uh, converting file types and stuff in the resource document for, the, for this course. Um, yeah, and then you have to render your video depending on your editor and how much editing you've done. This might take a little bit of time. This also depends on your PC. Uh, if you have a more powerful PC, it's much faster. Uh, but uh, rendering the video, for those who might not know, is basically just taking the project that you have in your editor and like sewing all of that together into an actual video file. Um, so yeah, for me that, I can show you. For me, that's just done by clicking this button. And so I can choose the, like the different settings for how many frames per second and the resolution and even bitrate and stuff like that if I want to be fancy. But um, there are always like nice default options for this anyway. Um, yeah, and then after you've done that, make sure you watch through your video. Uh, you should do it multiple times. It's rare that I make a video where I don't catch something after I've rendered it. Uh, maybe I just made a little mistake and leaving one something on screen for too long, or maybe I did something else. I made a typo in the text or whatever. Uh, and oftentimes I don't notice it until after I've rendered it, which is unlucky, but uh, you should make sure you watch through it multiple times uh, just to make sure that it's, that it's okay. Uh, oh yeah, also another thing that you could do uh, is that if you just open another video file that you have on your PC uh, from your camera or wherever, make sure that the audio is okay. Because if like you want the audio levels to be roughly the same on those two, because the one that you already have is probably a decent audio level. Because uh, yeah, if you open up the, the new video and you turn the volume all the way down on your PC, it might be really loud without you knowing. Uh, so check it, like compare it to another, another video that you have if you can. Just so we don't get our airs blown out when we look through them later. Uh, oh yeah, and check that the file isn't enormous. Uh, one minute videos should not be very big. Um, like, yeah, no, it, it does not need to be bigger than, I don't know, it depends on the video, but say 20 megabytes, for example, uh, or 50 for that reason, I don't know. But just, just check the file size and check that it's okay. Uh, and there are plenty of tools. There's a, a guide to this in the in this document as well on how to, com um, how to compress your file if you need to. Um, yeah, uh, Sada posted it in the, in the chat now. That's good. So basically just some general tips for this uh, is that at least for me, and I would imagine that for people who are also less experienced than me, every step in this process takes longer than I think. Like literally every single step takes longer than I think it's going to take. Uh, so 
the best time to start on this video is like a week ago. Uh, the second best time is now uh, because it takes much longer than you think and you don't want to be stuck. Uh, you know, you don't want to be stuck trying to rush through learning a new editor uh, on the day of delivery to pass the course. That's, yeah. You're gonna yeah, say I, will, I will just add that I would start, like I would get things ready by the 15th of, of November. So then you have 10 days before the deadline yeah. for editing, fixing, maybe you want to add some sounds or music or whatever, but make sure you would have like the basic chunk of, um, of video or however you're going to do ready by 15th, that's Monday um, in two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I totally agree. And yeah, no, just you should actually start on this as soon as possible because uh, it's very, very easy to underestimate how long it takes. Um, like even if you try to rush through it, it's still going to take time to to do all of the recording and script writing and everything. Uh, but also you don't want to rush through it because you want to make your video stand out in a good way. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you could also have it stand out differently, but uh, just try to keep that in mind when you're making this. Try to... Uh, find an interesting angle or uh, use a little bit of humor or energy or just just do something that makes your video stand out uh, make some do something that makes your video interesting um, that's a good thing to keep in mind uh, and I think something to aim for basically uh, and also there are I think some pretty good reasons um, why you should take this seriously First of all, uh, assuming that it's uh, you're making this for a project, it can be a really useful complement uh, for your project. I talked to a student uh, who said this, that like he's really tired of trying to explain what his project is about. Uh, so he would love to have a video that he can just send people that explains what this is. Uh, and it can be a really good advertisement. It can be uh, like the video that we talked about. It can be something to recruit people. Uh, it can be just straight up a really nice thing to have next to your project. So it's, it's worth taking this seriously. Obviously, this is something that actually motivated me. It's that uh, I haven't gotten this confirmed from Sada, but I, I took a gamble um, that at least last year, the best videos are shown off on the course page uh, and are used as examples for the next year. And I really wanted to make sure that, you know, I, would, I wanted to be above uh, among those, basically. Also, the best ones uh, are going to be shown on the, was it 2nd of, um, of December, when we're going to have like the, uh, we're going to watch them together. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, you know, if you're a little bit competitive, uh, like I am, you probably want to, you know, you probably want to make sure that you get in that. Uh, and... I couldn't go through this entire presentation without bragging a little bit. Uh, your video might also, wait, let's see. Your video might also pop off on YouTube and mine did, and it was really fun. Uh, so uh, like this, uh, this didn't start when I posted it. This started just in May. It started receiving views and stuff. And yeah, yeah. but what's the number now? Because this, oh, this, is, this, is, this is the number now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but it, it's it's stagnated a little bit, which you know unlucky. Uh, but if you're uh, if you're a um, if if you're better at doing this than me, if you're more, um, yeah, no, if you're if you're stricter with yourself and better at being productive than me, you might even turn this into a you know a proper YouTuber career. I didn't do that, but you know you might you might still have some have some fun on on the internet. So yeah, feel free to post any and all questions. And uh, oh yeah, also remember to go rate the course on mnet.no. It has a it has a really good score so far, and uh, you know it would be really cool if it was one of the highest rated courses in the in the entire site.